This is a video response to some of the amazing questions that I received back from students and teachers who attended the March 19th podcasting session. So this is meant to help just extend some of the ideas that you have. So um, great question. Somebody wanted to know, uh, they did see that I had resources about the craft of the episode and they wanted uh, other ideas in terms of how you go about actually structuring an episode. Uh, and of course there are, there are other ideas. So I thought it might be useful for you to actually consider some of them. Uh, I really like this model. It's uh, yes, yes, no. It's part of a podcast program called Reply All. They use it where basically um, somebody brings in a question and they ask two other people, uh, you know, do you know what this is? So it might be a headline, it might be a tweet, it might just be something that people are talking about and they kind of go around like, have you heard about this? Do you actually know what this is? Um, and sometimes the two other people will know and sometimes they won't and they'll discuss how it is that they came to learn about that. Um, the other example that I have for you here comes from a podcast called The Waves. Uh, it's part of Slate Podcast Programming. And once a year, they have the call-in show, and they focus on people questioning whether or not some kind of practice or something that's happened, whether or not it's sexist. So people submit voicemail messages, and then the hosts of the show go around, and they discuss whether or not they think that specific issue is sexist, and they rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, the third example I have is a program that's been around for a very long time. It's called This American Life, and every episode they have one theme, and they explore that theme through three very different stories. So that model is here for you to check out. The second to last one uh, comes from another Slate podcast called Outward. They start every episode with um, sort of talking about Prides uh, and prejudices. So, uh, oh, sorry, it's prides and provocations, actually. So these are things that have happened that are part of popular culture or they're in the news, and they try to highlight things that they think, like, yes, this is uh, really good, specifically for the LGBTQ plus community, um, and the provocations are things that they're thinking, oh, actually, I don't know about this. Um, this is not necessarily... Um, good news. The last one uh, I would refer to as long-form journalism, and the most famous example of it comes to you from Serial, which is uh, basically the telling of a story over multiple episodes. And those of you who have listened to Serial season one, you know that the journalists, uh, some of it is planned and structured, and some of the episodes actually just sort of take on a life of their own. So those are five different alternative structures for you to check out uh, and for you to think, uh, you know, does this work or does this not work? And it's important to remember that it, it might be a blend. Uh, you might actually want to do something to, similar to the prize and provocations at the start of your episode, and then the call-in show. Again, it, it might be different things that you have rounded up from peers and you discuss. Okay, um, I had a question about recording, what the best programs to use are. Uh, I would say, above all else, Space and speakers, meaning how loudly you are speaking, that's what matters more than anything else. So if you are having an interview or if you're having a roundtable discussion, you want to make sure that you're in a quiet space and you want to make sure that everyone is speaking up. If you're whispering, the microphone's not really going to make that big of a difference. So really thinking about hosting your conversation in a space where you're not going to be interrupted um, and encouraging people to speak up is key. Um, having a microphone is great, but it's not a necessity. The Voice Memo app on your phone is fantastic, um, and you can get a really good recording just for that. In terms of editing, I recommend GarageBand. The Loops feature that's built in is, is just absolutely outstanding. Uh, there's a lot of work that you can do, and of course I've already provided you with a few tutorials so you can get started there. I also had a question about recording long distance. 
So remember that it doesn't always have to be a podcast episode where you're talking to people in the room. If you are on the most recent version of Skype, you don't need a plugin, you don't need an extension. The latest version of Skype actually makes it really easy to record the audio um, from a Skype call, and I've linked in a tutorial here for you to check out how to do that. So maybe you want to have a podcast episode where you're talking to students at another UWC, or maybe you've contacted an expert who's in a different country uh, and you want to have that as part of your episode. That's how you would go about doing that. I had a question about engagement. How do you keep your audience? Um, and someone said, can we force them to subscribe? Um, again, I, I think you can absolutely invite people to subscribe to your show, uh, and you can do that easily with the digital portfolio. But I actually think it's super important that you are asking for feedback. So once you put an episode together, um, have a few friends and, and ask them, you know, what did you think? What did you like? Where were we going on too long? What could have been shorter? What would you like to have had us discuss more of? And it's also important that you share in many ways. Like I said in the session, um, if you are sharing through your own social media, that's great. If you're also asking um, maybe your head of grade to share the episode out, that's wonderful. And creating content that is timely. So if there's a big event coming up uh, and you are thinking intentionally about creating a podcast episode to accompany that, so if Culturama is coming up and you are going to have an episode about the way that art brings people together, again, trying to sync up with what's happening on the school calendar, uh, that might be a way just to sort of piggyback on something that's happening. I also had another question. So how long does it take for a group to put together a successful podcast episode? And my answer is it's going to be longer in the beginning and that's okay. You'll get better at it uh, after you've produced two or three episodes and then it will be a good deal faster. I would say if you're putting together an episode that is 10 minutes in length, you probably will need a solid hour to edit that episode down. And I also had a question, how do you know what stays in the episode and what goes? I think that actually starts with you and your team thinking about what's the intention, what's the purpose behind this episode, what is the most valuable and important information that our audience needs to hear, and if it doesn't fit in with that, cut it out. Avoid producing episodes that are uh, just overly lengthy. I would really suggest in the beginning you focus on putting together five to ten minute episodes that are concise and that are strong. That's a great way for you to build up your audience. Um, and then actually if you feel like you need to produce a longer episode, um, of course go ahead and do that. But I think it's, it's great to give people bite-sized episodes that make them come back and, and make them interested in, in hearing more from you and your team. I had a question about podcasting music, and I want to recommend this link here, which also has a few places that you can go online for pre-made, ready-made music that you can use in your podcast. And I'd also recommend exploring this link because it does debunk a few myths about sampling. Um, I've heard people say that they think, oh, uh, I'm allowed to take just 20 seconds of this song and use it in my podcast, and actually that's not accurate. So uh, that's a great resource for you to go to. And my last point about uh, creating, I had a question about creating music that fits with the, the theme or with the tone of your show. I think a lot of that comes from exploring um, loops in GarageBand and, and just kind of playing around with different combinations until you find something that works. Uh, and the question in terms of how do I create music that allows me to have a really nice smooth introduction, I just want to show you this. Uh, you can see this is everything that went into the Global Politics, the Ears of East podcast. So you can see there's a series of lots of different loops, and then this here is just an audio segment. So let's quickly have a listen to what this sounds like. And I want to point out that it starts in kind of quite quietly, and you'll notice that it also fades out at the end. Hello, my name is Zoe. I'm in grade 12 and I am an ear of 
Europe East. Hello, my name is Bella and I'm in grade 12 and I'm in Europe East. Hello, my name is Dwight. I'm in grade 12 and I'm in Europe East. Hello, my name is Fraser. I'm in grade 12 and I'm in Europe East. Hello, my name is Gabby. I'm in grade 11 and I'm in Europe East. Hi, I'm Herbert. I'm a grade 12 student and I'm in Europe You are listening to the Global Politics Podcast, brought to you by the students of UWC-SEA. Okay, so you notice here at the end I have this tambourine loop that plays again and again and it fades out softly. The reason that I recommend ending your intro track with a fade like this is because then you can layer on top of it the first voice track that you have or the first part of the conversation that you've recorded for your podcast. So it's a really nice way to just easily transition out from the song and into the new audio. So whenever I'm working on intro music for a song, I always make sure that I've got kind of a nice quiet, soft ending to it so that I can pull the audio on top of it in and it starts as almost as part of the music. So that would be my recommendation to you. Uh, the other thing that I'll say is, of course, you, you get a better sense of great podcasting music the more you consume podcasts. Um, and I, I know that I already talked briefly about Serial Season 1, but I think it's an amazing podcast. It's part of the reason that podcasting has become so popular in the last few years. But if you go back and you listen, uh, it's a podcast that I think does an amazing job to set the mood, set the tone with the music it uses. And you'll notice it's quite simple. It's not overly complex. Uh, and a lot of the, the music that they use and that they embed in is quite short. But it's, it's a great, great example. So go back, have a listen to Serial Season 1. I think in terms of the craft of podcasting, it's a wonderful mentor text. And I think you'll gain so much. Uh, and I think you'll also really just enjoy the podcast in, its, in and of itself. Okay, uh, again, thank you so much for your participation this week. And please let me know if I can follow up with you or your team. Have a great rest of your week.